Hi, welcome to Three Things Thursday with Robert Hertel. So today, I want to get into breaking some old habits, all right? And what I want to get into today is in regards to listings, so you might want to pay attention, okay? So I'm based out here in Southern California, and I'm looking at all these cities of homes that are selling and how many are selling for list price and above, and I'm watching the trends month by month. And what I'm seeing is that in a lot of these cities, 70, 80, 90% of the homes that are selling are selling for list price and above. Now we know the reason is that we have very, 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 very low inventory, nobody's selling, and very, 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 very high amount of buyers because people want to live here in Southern California. So that's causing a bidding war on all these properties and people are doing whatever they have to do to buy it. Nobody wants to rent anymore. Rents are going up, interest rates are going up, home prices are going up. People are doing whatever they have to do to get in the property, whether it's paying cash above or whether it's getting money as a gift, whether it's taking out multiple loans, whatever the case may be, they're doing what they have to do to get a property and they're willing to pay whatever they have to pay. All right. I mean, we're, we're seeing some that are 60, 70, 80, $100,000 above asking price. That's the market right now. That's the way it goes. So with that being the case, we need to shift a little bit some of our old habits that we've been taught. And the one I want to touch on today is taking over price listings. Now, here's the thing. I know some of you are like, wait, what? Is he really going to talk about taking over price listings right now? That's something we should do? I I know, because you've heard for years, whether it be Mike Ferry or Neil Schwartz or any other coach that you have, don't take over price listings, okay? It won't sell, it's a waste of your time, it hurts your reputation, the financial cost that goes into taking a listing, marketing, all these other different things, you're losing money. We've heard it for years and they've always been right. But it's 2017 and here in Southern California, and I'm sure again in most other places across the United States, inventory is tight buyers are high and homes are selling for list price and above. So the truth is we don't really know what a home's going to sell for nowadays. So we have to consider taking overpriced listings. All right. Now here's the other thing though. There's a technique to this and that's what we're going to get into today because I don't want people running out going, what do you think your home's worth? $10 million. Great. I'll take the listing. Okay. Don't do that. Don't hold on. Finish the video. Finish the video. Okay. We'll get there. We'll get there. But we have to consider taking them now because it's tough to get listings and we know listings are the name of the game. If you get a listing right now, chances are you have a guaranteed paycheck. Okay? I don't know if that doesn't make sense. Chances are you have a guaranteed paycheck. If you get a listing right now, you have a guaranteed paycheck. All right? That's the name of the game because people are willing to pay pretty much whatever they can to get into a property. All right? So we have to now consider taking overpriced listings. So here's what we're going to do. Three things Thursday on the techniques and skills you need to have in regards to taking overpriced listings. All right? So let's get into it. Number one is this. The question being, well, how overpriced? You know, if I think the home is worth $600,000 and a seller wants $620,000, is that okay? What if the seller wants $650,000? What if they want $660,000? How much overpriced is okay to take? Here's a good way to figure that out. Look at the expired listings in that particular area and figure out how overpriced they were. So here's what I mean. You're going to a listing appointment and you know that the home is roughly around $600,000. We'll just use that figure. Take a look at the expireds in that area and see, okay, this one expired and based on the comps in this area, it's about 20% overpriced, it expired. This one expired, it's 25%. This one expired, it's 22%, whatever the case may be. So now you know, okay, I can't go above that 20% threshold because then it's going to expire. Meaning that if it's 10%, if I say 600 and the seller says 660, you know, we're 10% overpriced, I'm gonna take that listing because that seems to be okay. If I'm 5%, whatever the case may be, figure out what homes are expiring at and don't go above that threshold. Use that when you're trying to price homes. That way, if you just go in there blindly and say, well, I'm gonna go in there one, two, three, four percent above. You might be selling yourself short. You might be walking away from a listing that you could sell for $40,000 above asking price and you walked away from it. 
So that's a great strategy to use. Look at the expired listings in the area, find out what percentage overpriced they are, and now you have your threshold of what to do and what to negotiate with. So now you go in and the seller says, well, I want to list it for this. Okay, look at my sheet. I think we could do that. Would you sign the contract, please? Now you have a listing and that has a great opportunity to sell. Okay, we don't know what it's going to sell for, so use that as a threshold to get in there and take that listing. All right, so that's number one. That's how you figure out how above you can go. All right, number two is this. You have to have a price reduction strategy. All right, because here's the thing. I get it, 70, 80, 90% of homes are selling for list price and above, but we don't have a specific percentage of how above list price is it 5%, 10%, other than the expired listings, right? So if you're using expired listings as a threshold, that's good, but there's still the possibility that it's not gonna get the price that you want because it is technically overpriced, all right? So you have to have a price reduction strategy. So one of the ways you can do that is discuss that upfront in the contract, okay? You want to sell it for $650,000, I think it's worth six hundred. dollars Tell you what, if we don't get any offers at your price in the first two weeks, three weeks, however you want to do it, we're going to reduce the price. I'm going to put that addendum in the contract. Okay, Have that set up front. It's much easier to discuss that up front as opposed to going back in three weeks going, hey, Mr. Seller, um, so we don't have any offers on your home because then the seller's going to look at you and go, what the hell are you doing? You don't know what you're doing. I picked a crappy agent. Nobody wants that, right? So discuss that up front so now you know, okay, if we don't get any offers in at this particular price, we need to reduce it, right? So discuss that up front. The other parts of the price reduction is be able to track your activities so it actually shows that you're doing things, okay? It's really hard to ask for a price reduction when they, when they think you haven't done anything. Well, what have you done to get my home sold? I put it on the MLS. I put it on Facebook. You have something better, right? Have a calendar written out of, okay, I door knocked these homes, I called these people for your property, I did an open house on these days, or depending on the company, at Century 21, we have something called Golden Ruler, which shows you know, online activity. So all the websites of how many people viewed it, could be thousands, whatever the case may be, you have a nice report to show them, say, look, this is all the online activity I've gotten, I've done this, I've done that, all these other great things. So track your activities, put it in a calendar, put it in a sheet, so you can show them that, say, look, I've done all this, we're not getting any offers, that means the home's overpriced, we have to reduce it, okay? Have a price reduction strategy because, again, the home is technically overpriced, all right? So that's number two. Number three is this. Determine who's going to pay the potential difference in an appraisal. Here's what I mean. The home's overpriced, so even if you get an offer at, an, at that price, an appraisal may come back at a lower price based on what the market's at. So you think the home's worth $600,000, you get an offer at six fifty. dollars an appraiser comes in and says, no, the home's worth $600,000, you have that $50,000 gap. Discuss that with your client up front on, okay, in this potential situation, what are we going to do to get that paid? So now I can let potential buyers know, look at the sellers agreed, if the appraisal price comes in lower, the seller's gotta come up with the money, are you okay with doing that? So now you have that set up to where it's easy to access, you let the buyers know, the buyer's agents know, your seller knows. Now there's obviously counters and all those other things, but at least there's a plan in place as opposed to, all right, no problem, we'll sell it for 650. The appraisal comes in at 600, the buyer doesn't wanna do it, the seller's going, well, what are we gonna do? No, I'm not gonna do this. Now you have a bickering match back and forth that could have been resolved by just establishing that up front. All right, so make sure you have that conversation with yourself. Look at, I do think your home's overpriced, but I think we might be able to get it sold at this price. However, an appraisal might come in lower, so we need to discuss what our strategy is gonna be with that difference. All right, so make sure you discuss that. All right, so those are your three things. So the main thing is this. Be open to taking overpriced listings. It's tough to get listings right now. It's a tight inventory market. Listings are the name of the game. You need to get paid. Be willing to take overpriced listings. But make sure you have a standard on how overpriced you're willing to go. Use expired listings for that. Have a price reduction strategy and also discuss upfront who might have to pay the difference if the appraisal comes in lower. All right? Do that. 
and you will be more successful in 2017. It's a changed market. It's not going to change. It's not changing currently. It's already changed. So we have to adjust to that so we get more listings and make more money. All right? That's your three things Thursday for the week. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can get all my other coaching videos. And if you have any other tips in regards to taking overpriced listings or anything we discussed, please comment below. I'd love to hear them. Hope you have a great day, and I look forward to speaking to you again next week.